Hi, welcome to the tutorial for dailies in Cortex. I'm Ian, and today I'll be walking you through the tools and functions used during a typical day of dailies so that you can easily get started syncing and coloring material on your own. We'll be going over the sync tool and color tool as they relate to dailies. If you're not familiar with any aspect of what we cover in this tutorial, visit tutorials.mtifilm.com for other videos demonstrating the use of Cortex. Keyboard shortcuts for these tools are available in the Help menu, and as we go through the demo today, keyboard shortcuts will appear on the screen for easy reference. When you open a new dailies job in Cortex, you'll typically want to bring in media for syncing and color. You can do that by importing media files or folders if they already live on your storage, or you can use Cortex's copy tool to offload media from your source and automatically import that media to your Cortex job. If you don't know how to use the copy tool yet, go watch our copy tool quick start demo. Today we're going to start in the sync tool. In the sync tool, media gets appropriately placed in either the picture or audio bins. Resolution, frame rate, duration, timecode, and other clip specific metadata are shown individually in these columns and also for the actively selected clip down at the bottom of the UI. This is the sync region, containing clip tracks for video and audio, as well as a 7-frame magnification window for sync refinement. Most metadata is fully customizable and is usually applied to the picture clip automatically when it's synced with an audio clip. Above the preview monitor, these tabs represent the active deliverables available for the workflow to which your job belongs. Use these tabs to preview your clips with the configured settings for each deliverable. Navigation controls allow you to navigate your material by playing forward or backward, or by stepping forward or backward frame by frame. The mark controls set in or out points in your media for use while rendering. To sync media, select your picture clip and press the backslash key to auto-sync the picture file to an audio file by matching timecode. The video and audio tracks will then populate with the synced media ready for sync refinement. In our 7-frame magnification window, we can see that an audio waveform spike exists a few frames off from the frame of the slate clap. To refine this sync, press the Refine Sync button, and Cortex will bump the biggest audio spike in the 7-frame range to match the current picture frame. And now you can see the offset, which is just over 2 frames for this clip. If you need to manually bump audio by single frames, press either Bump button. And for even more detailed refinement, hold the Control button while you bump, to bump your audio in quarter frames. To batch sync the rest of your clips, utilizing the offset we just determined, select the remaining clips in your picture bin and press the Auto Sync button. Then, all the selected media will be synced with the recalled offset and will be ready for sync refinement. If more involved refinement is needed, press the U key to unlock the audio track from the picture track. Then, you can scrub through the audio track on its own or choose an entirely new audio clip from the bin to use as your synced sound. When you reach the point at which you want to establish sync to the frozen picture, press the Refine Sync key again. Set a print status, and if you have comments that need to be added to any clip, enter them here and choose a severity. These comments will be then added to any dailies reports that include that clip. Now, our synced media is ready for color. The Color tool provides the ability to generate and apply primary color correction via LUTs, CDLs, stills, and panels. The Color tool is fully ASC compliant and contains ASIS support if the project is initially set up as an ASIS project. The tabs along the left contain different modules for manipulating camera decoding, ASIS input, framing, LUTs, and primary color, along with some effect functions like grain and aperture management. MTI Samsung UpRes and Dolby Vision HDR metadata settings, as well as subtitle gain controls. Add input or output LUTs by choosing one of the built in LUTs in the drop down, or import one that you wish to use. The primary tab presents three color wheels that act as lift, gamma, and gain controls. Switching color modes provides red, green, and blue printer light controls. Both modes output ASC-compliant power, offset, and slope CDL values, recorded on a clip-by-clip -clip basis. Primary color controls can be controlled three ways, via keyboard commands, the mouse and the GUI, 
or tactile panels like the Tangent Wave or Nucota Precision. To adjust color balance using the keyboard, select one of the color wheels by pressing and holding down the 1 key for Lift, the 2 key for Gamma, or the 3 key for Gain. Then use the up, down, left, and right arrow keys to adjust the gain and color balance. Located next to each color wheel are plus and minus buttons. To change the lift, gamma, and gain levels, click the corresponding plus or minus buttons. Alternatively, you can hold down the alt key and use the up and down arrows. In each case, unmodified, the values are changed by 1%. Holding down the shift key, changes the values by 10%, and holding down the control key changes values by a tenth of a percent. While Cortex is completely ASC compliant, it does provide the ability to add dissolves to a clip. Set color parameters on your clip for the start of your dissolve. Then, go to the position where you want the dissolve to begin, and press the P key. Then, go to the location where you want the dissolve to end, and press the Mark Color Dissolve Out button. Now, make any settings adjustments to this side of the dissolve. And you have your dissolve. To change where the dissolve starts, navigate to the newly desired start point and press the Mark Color Dissolve In button. To change where the dissolve ends, navigate to the newly desired out point and mark the color dissolve out here. You can add as many dissolves to a clip as you'd like. But be aware, only the A side of the first dissolve will be exported into any ALE or XML file. To delete a dissolve, press Ctrl P when the playhead is located inside the dissolve. While in the color tool, any stills that you grab from your work are compiled in the still store. There are a few other stores to choose from also. Any Cortex still in any store has the ability to apply its color, LUTs, framing, ASUS and camera decode options to any clip in the current job. Select the clips you want to apply your still's color settings to, and then double click on the still to apply all the settings. You can also right click on the still and choose which individual settings to apply to your selected clips. A quick view list of all color settings is found in the pipeline tab so that you can quickly see what you've done to the active clip in the color tool. Once sync and color are completed for dailies, the last steps are creating reels and rendering your deliverables. Create a new reel here, name it according to your specifications, and choose the timecode setting you want. Source will use the source timecode for each clip, and Continuous will generate new timecode using the user-defined start point and frame rate. Set your other criteria, and choose your deliverables. You can either choose an entire workflow to render your reel for all its contained deliverables, or you can pick and choose deliverables from all workflows available to your project. A powerful feature of Cortex is background rendering. This means that while you're working on any task, you can add media to the reels as you complete each clip. Cortex will then render each clip for each deliverable configuration as you continue working in the foreground. As long as the reel is open, the contained clips can be altered and Cortex will automatically re-render those that have changed. Once you've completed work for each reel, closing it will instruct Cortex to finish rendering its deliverables and generate reports to be added to each deliverable folder. Check the status of each render in the Render tab, and if you want, alter the render priority of each deliverable. Right-click on a deliverable and choose the desired action from the context menu to move that deliverable up or down in the render queue. And that is the quick start demo for dailies in Cortex. Please watch our other tutorials to more fully learn about Cortex by going to tutorials.mtifilm.com. For support, to submit a help ticket, or to find useful information about Cortex, please check out forum.mtifilm.com. Thanks.